see. Let Powerline Church now see. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, when sickness rose up against us, when the economy rose up against us, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. But when you keep on reading, it said, Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their feet. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And so this morning we'll give God praise because we know that we have escaped. And if it hadn't been for the Lord on our side, what the enemy wished for us would have come to pass. But this morning we are standing here on the first Sunday of the year of 2024 because the Lord is on our side. In our year of yes, the Lord is on our side. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for only you are worthy of my praise. Oh Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for only you are worthy of my praise. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I thank you for today. Hey. I thank you for only you are worthy of my praise. Sing.
you are looking glorious. His glory is all over you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's start to return to our seat. I want to congratulate you for being here today, the first Sunday in the year 2024. Today is January 7. God is doing marvelous things in our lives. Hallelujah. Also today is day number five of the 40 days of wonders without numbers. Shout for joy. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. We want to welcome everyone back to Power Light Church. We are a people marvelously helped by God. This year, 2024, is peculiar. It is special. And the word of the Lord came to the servant, our pastor and our general superintendent, that 2024 is our year of what? Oh, this year has not left the stage. 2024 is our year of what? Yes. We say yes to marriages. Yes. We say yes to new businesses. Yes. We say yes to greatness. Yes. We say yes to children, new children. We say yes to increase numerically, financially, in the name of Jesus. Shout yes. Say it, believe it, walk in it, and live it. Yes will be your portion in the name of Jesus. We'd like to welcome some first timers, first time worshipers here to the church today. Today is your first time with us worshiping here at Paraline Church. Wherever you are seated in the church, just give Jesus a holy wave. Jesus a holy wave. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Now, if you happen to have someone come in later on during the service and you know they are new, please have them wave behind. Back on, on one of the ushers to give them a card, congratulate them and welcome them from, for coming to worship with us here at Powerline Church. At the end of the service, please make sure you grab one of the ushers to direct them to see Dr. Kofi or Sister Thunder, the head of our hospitality. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. We'd like to welcome some online worshipers, especially if today is your first time worshiping with us here at Powerline Church. We want to celebrate you right here from this great state of Oklahoma. Let's give them a very big, 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 big power line. Church, welcome. You are welcome. We believe that God is set to do amazing things in your life. So stay with us, keep with us, and stay plugged in. Now, if you have your mobile devices with you here, go ahead and share this feed. We are live on Facebook and on YouTube. Share this stream. Of course, we want to recognize those worshiping with us outside of the United States, in Canada, in Europe, and all around the world. Drop a comment. Let us know where you are joining us from. Youth, this is for you. It's youth in the house shout for joy. Let the youth in the house shout for joy. Okay. So let me talk to you guys for a minute. Okay. This is coming from the general superintendent. So just uh, bear with me. I'm the messenger. Okay. We want you to be more active on the social media platforms. Get more active on the social media platform. Just don't be a scroll by person. Just don't scroll by on any of the photos you see, any of the reels you see, any of the posts we put on social media. Be active, be an active participant on our social platform. We want to see you drop a comment, share, like, drop an emoji, put some heart emojis on there. Repost, retweet, drop it somewhere, share the link. Amen. Shout glory. And don't forget to tag yourself and put in the hashtag. Let someone know you are plugged in to the power line church. Hallelujah. Amen. So get active. Tell somebody, get active. And Lord bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. You can also join our services on the power line church app on your mobile devices and on your smart TV. This app is user friendly. And we have listed on the app upcoming events and services for your convenience. So tell somebody to download the app. You can download it on the Google Play Store, on the App Store, on your mobile devices, and even on your smart TV. Powerline Kids is open. Please check your child or your children in. The nursery is also open for the nursing mothers and infants. During the 40 days of uh, wonders without numbers. Barline 
our kids will be open on Wednesdays and Fridays. So please take note of that on Wednesdays and Fridays. Also, giving can be done in these ways. Your giving and tithing can be done, number one, by cash. Number two, make your checks payable to Powerline Church. Number three, electronically via Zelle to Powerline Church 1 at gmail.com. And number four, online by texting Powerline to 888-364-4483. Finally, 40 Days of Wonders Without Numbers, our corporate fasting and prayer continues tomorrow. So please be here at what time? 6 p.m. Be here promptly. We will come to church and pray together one day to Saturdays except for Sundays. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ of Nazareth as we take our offering. Celebrate Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's offering time. Offering time. The book of Luke, uh, chapter 16, verse eight, uh, 10, says, Whoever is honest with very little can also be honest with little. Whoever is honest with much can also be trusted with little. And whoever is dishonest with much will also be dishonest with little. And that tells us that when you are packaging your tithes and offering, be honest to God. He knows your heart. He knows what you have behind. Left, give God what is right and not just what is left. Purpose in your heart to give to God what is right and not just what is left. Not just any change that you found in your pocket. And may the Lord bless you as you do so. If you need an envelope, uh, raise your hands. The ushers will pass you an envelope and you can see on the screen uh, if you want to give uh, via online uh, Powerline, uh, you can text to Powerline and also Zale at Powerline Church uh, at Gmail. Amen. If you have done so, uh, let's rise to our feet and lift our offering to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we have come with a heart of gratitude of appreciation to say thank you for all you're doing from the beginning of this year up till now. We have seen your hand upon all our doings, all our businesses, our work. We ask you this morning that you will bless this offering and tithes in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. I have come to give back to you. I have come to say thank you, Lord. I've come to give back to you. To give back to you. I've come to say thank you, Lord. I have come to say thank you, Lord. Oh, we've come to give back to you, Lord. Come to say thank you, Lord. I have come to say thank you, Lord. Oh, take all the praise. Take all the praise. Take all the praise, Lord. Take all the praise. You deserve, Lord. Take all the praise. Take all the praise.
sing a new song. Joy, 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 joy. Sing a new song. Some are lying dead. 
gone, hopeless situation. And on the other side is a department of life. And how do you know that life is at work? You hear the noise, you hear the cries, you hear the shout. Oh, right. hey, 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 I can't hear you. understand that the plans, the intentions of the enemy for you so far is to make sure you are depressed. It's to make sure that there is no new song coming out of your mouth. That's the plan of the enemy. It's to discourage you. It's to put you in a place where there are no signs of life coming from you. But hear what Jesus says. I have come to give you life and to give you life in abundance. Hold on. And the first sign of life is noise and sound. If a baby does not cry, they will not bring him or bring her from the hospital. It is when she cries, when he cries, that even the doctors know that there is life. So noise and sounds are indicators of life. Can I tell you this? We all have passion. It's just that we choose what to put our passion in. This is how you know. People say, oh, this is how God created me. That's not how God created you. When you are quarreling with somebody, that's not how you quarrel. You don't quarrel like, hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's godly. It's spiritual to make noise. It's godly, it's spiritual to shout, it's godly, it's spiritual to jump, it's godly, it's spiritual to clap, to celebrate. One more time, power line, can I hear from you? Let heaven hear from you. Let me say this to you in addition, it's just coming out. Do you know that your words, your words are soldiers? Your words, the words you choose to speak, they are soldiers. They are missiles. They are not just words. You are not just speaking. You are not just shouting to communicate. As you shout, as you speak, you are putting your angels to work. You are putting your oh rabako shatter. You, you see, there are some people here, they are too educated. I think some people here are too rich. So the response is different. You do not understand that it was shouting that brought down the walls of Jericho. before we get busy with the word this morning. Once upon a time, Balak went and got Balaam to 
come and curse the people of God. Then Balaam began to ask, how can you begin to curse those that God has blessed? And then he says something very crucial, depending on the translation you are using. He says, seeing that the shadow of the king is in their midst. Hold on. He says, seeing that, you see, even Satan, when you pray Satan, he goes to work for you. Talk less of God. He said, seeing that the shout of the king of the universe, the shout of the creator of the universe, he see they are missed. So he, he, his position was, there is no way you can defeat these people. As long as they keep shouting to their king, their victory is certain. Their victory is sure. I said their victory is irreversible. Yeah. Are you tired? I can hear. I can hear. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. God has blessed me, and I know God has blessed many of you. But you know, one of the things I am joy so much especially, especially when my children were still very very young when I'm coming home at night or in the evenings I like to hear noise from my house and really especially when we live in the apartments when I'm coming your house you think there are <laughs> there are 20 children in the house I, go, 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 go. Hey. I enjoy it that tells me that everything is okay I said that tells me that everything is okay that tells me that everything is okay. And in 2024, everything is going to be perfect with you. Continuously, you will make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Sounds of victory will always come from your camp. Shout a big amen. Somebody shout, Lord. Like you have heard the announcer say that this year is our year of yes. Please understand that I didn't just think it up. No, no. As a matter of fact, when I was coming for the crossover service, I, I, I don't want to say it was self-condemnation, but I began to talk to myself. I said, see now, all the big churches, they've received word for their members, for their congregation. I was somewhere driving to church. I said, see, I don't have any word to tell my people. I said, well, if they just ask me, I'll say, well, I don't have anything. You guys go figure it out. I don't know. Then, <laughs> as we were crossing over, a choir was helping us. I was kneeling down there by that iron bar. And the word came, boom. I opened my eyes. I said, maybe somebody was talking. So I shut my eyes. I was kneeling close to her, Lindsay. Then the word came again, boom. Then it came, boom, boom, boom. So I knew the Lord was speaking to me. And it says that 2024 is our year of yes. I said yes to prosperity. Yes. Yes to divine health. Yes. Yes to joy. Yes. Yes to breakthroughs. Yes. Yes to righteousness. Yes. Yes, to strength. Yes. Yes, to protection. Yes. Yes, to fruitfulness. Yes. Show hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, to peace. Yes. I say yes, to peace. Yes. Yes, to satisfaction. Yes. Shout hallelujah. As so we receive that word, and it will work for us. All through this year, in the name of the Father, I say in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Slap those hands together for Jesus, as you majestically take your seat. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, choir. God bless you. May the Lord increase your greatness. In Jesus' name. I thought the clapping would be more than that. 
I don't. I thought the clap will be more. Than, <laughs> if you don't clap very well, next Sunday you'll be the one to come and sing here. Amen. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. You all look so beautiful and so colorful. No, 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 no. I said you all look so beautiful and so colorful. Okay, let, let me beg you. I know life, life is very easy for all of us. One of the things I want to encourage you to do this year is to know how to accept compliments and know how to respond to compliments. Okay? So when people say nice things about you, don't say, oh, me, poor me. Mm. No, you are not poor. It's not a sign of humility. Ah, uh, me, me. I want every seat there covered. Now, I'm saying it in front of camera because I've said it several behind camera. Anytime you see me say anything before camera, I've, I've been saying it behind. Just do it the way I want it. And life is good. Hallelujah. So, um, what was the last thing I said? See, Nadia, that you have helped me. Yeah, compliments. Know how to respond, especially to, to positive words. Is one thing I'm going to be pushing this year. This year, 2024. Our word. The word. The word. I've seen a lot of you. You, you pray. You fast. You love Jesus. You give. But the only small thing that is remaining is the adequate, effective use of this weapon that the Lord has given to you. And you cannot rise above the words that are coming from your mouth. You can't. No prophet can free you from that. The words of your mouth. So now, if you watch for like nearly two years, because I took a time, like three months, I studied these Jewish people. That was even before I traveled to Israel. Got many of their materials, whether in business, family, and all. And I discovered something. The Jews don't pray as much as we pray. But this is what they do better than us. They pray, but they bless more. They bless and how do you bless? How do you bless? You bless by words. So for example, if you don't tell your child that you are going to be great, it's wrong. You don't say, oh, you child, you are going to be great. You tell him now, you tell her now that you are great. You are blessed. You are the head and not the tail. You tell the children you are more than conqueror. Oh, and you have been saying it and he comes back and she comes back with all kinds of results from school. You look at the results and you tell him again, you are the head and not the tail. You don't tell the child that it's going to be better. It's going to be better. You are pushing it into the future and it will never come. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because in the Hebrew diction, they don't have futuristic tenses like that. They say it like it's happening now. That's why you see, you hear that in the book of Romans, I think 417, that God called those things that be not as though they were. God did not say, Abraham, you are, no, 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 he, he what he want to see, he began to speak it. I, I don't even know why I'm saying it this morning. I think somebody's here who needs to hear that. So you say what you want to see. Stop describing your problem. Stop talking your problem. The more you talk problem, the more the problem take on life and multiply. You know, some people just want you to sympathize with them. You don't need sympathy. What you need is adequate, effective use of your mouth. Start saying things you want to see. I don't want to hear how you suffered, how this happened. I don't want to hear it. And God doesn't want to hear it. Keep, just say what you want to see. That's it. I am not going to be rich. I am rich. The pastor is so arrogant. Your opinion. It doesn't count. I am not going to be among the best. I am the best. 
Seek confirmation. Oh, just hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hallelujah. Because I'm, I'm feeling very easy. No, this is it. You people made me do it. So, thank you. Some of you are businessmen here. Businessmen, businessmen, let me advise you. This is my mindset. Too. I'm not supposed to be saying this. Even if you're doing business, concerning, your job is to take out the competitors. Kill them. Swallow them. You don't say, well, uh, you know, your job is to take out the competition completely. Your job is not to be one of the people. Your job is to be the number one, not even number one, to be the only one. Do you understand? All those ones, you have not made $500. You are showing your brother the way for the business. You have not made five hundred dollars. Yeah, all the all your business secrets you have told everybody. No. As a businessman, as a businesswoman, your job is not to be number one. Your job is to be the only one. You see Microsoft. Where is Microsoft's competition? Some of you are from Africa. Dangote. Even if you are angry, will you fight with Dangote? You say, okay, he's a Muslim. I won't buy cement again from him. Is it possible? Not only in Nigeria, in West Africa, he has dominated everywhere. Yeah, if you call another name for Dangote, another name for cement is Dangote. Competition. You are too nice. Don't be nice when you are doing business. Don't be nice. Brutal. Play by the rules. Stick to the laws of the land. Get involved in covenant practices. But... As a businessman, your job is not to live and let's live. Because the competition you don't take out tomorrow will become your headache tomorrow. Oh, these guys are too nice. Let me move to you. Or when your son comes home, comes home with straight A's, as a straight A student, do you chastise this son? Oh my God, you did too much. You should have allowed them to share in the A's. Do you do that? What do you do? You're too nice. You're, you have no even. They say this is the boat. Oh. You're on this boat. And this boat can only carry two people to cross this lake to the other side before you can get a bigger boat that can take a thousand people. This boat that can only take three people now. You, you are calling 500, all your villagers, 500 people to come and enter the boat. And all of you sink. Am I being too harsh? Where I'm coming from, that I served faithfully for 13 years, they don't know 10% of my secrets on how that thing was working. They can come and tell you, this, this, this. Tomorrow, you come and, you won't even give me credit. I will tell you, this is my secret. This is what, look at you. Figure it out. Your job is to take out competition. You should be the only dominant person in your field. You guys are not smiling. You have a boyfriend. The thing has not solidified. Even if they give you ring, hide the ring first. Because life is. Then they give you a ring. You do it like this and put on Facebook. And tomorrow your best friends. When they say, ah, ah bros. Ah, where well don't bros? Oh, bros, thank you. All that you are doing for our friend. God bless you, bros. Ah, good men like you are not easy to find again. Ah, I wish I had met you first, bros. And you want to hear the truth? All men shut your ears. An average man is very greedy. You don't understand? You did hear what I just said? An average man is very greedy. 
I don't know the kind of anointing that is moving today. See the men, they are not smiling. I'm going to get, get away from you guys. An average man is greedy. They may not be greedy for money. They may not be greedy for fame. An average man is greedy. So he will tell her, what nonsense are you doing? My friend stopped her. Then she would, he will look and say, are you sure? <laughs> God is helping us. God is helping us. Hey, God is helping us. Then the, the, the lady will say, can I, can I get your number? Then tomorrow, you say, oh, I will just pass in the neighborhood. I, I just say, I should. Meanwhile, on the other side, cause has, to, has dried up. No more cause. No more text. You call, they look at it. They put the phone down. Because they have gone behind you to scatter you. And it's not their fault. It's your, your mouth. You talk too much. Do you know how many ninja marriages we have organized in this church, in this Oklahoma? Ninja marriages that I conducted. Ninja marriages. Nobody knew. I see if I hear it anywhere, I will break your leg. Because jungle must mature before people hear. Do you know that terminology? Jungle must mature first. So you are looking at people, you think they are single. They be married. Hey, hey. But Papa say, because what the people know is what they kill. What they know is what they kill. What they know is what they kill. What they don't know, they will label it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This year, keep things in your heart. No best friend. No best friend. Did you hear what I said? I said, no best friend. All those say, it's my best friend. Can I ask you a question? Your best friend of five years ago, where's the best friend? Sir, your best friend of ten years ago, where is he? Where is she? Has she not become your enemies now? Oh, this church is... Oh. Who is my best friend? <laughs> Holy Spirit, Pao. <laughs> there are some things you are looking for. Holy Spirit, Pao. <laughs> Best friend, best friend, best friend. I fly up to Houston. I want to go and see my best friend. Have you heard one day that Pastor Joshua bought money, bought ticket to travel somewhere? Don't know, families. For, thank God for families. Don't, don't get me wrong. But oh, I have this friend in Canada. And I have friends all over the place. You come and see me. I'll be over. I know they go transfer. Did you know that terminology? Can I say this? I was thinking about this young woman some couple of days. I said, Kai, Kai, Kai. She doesn't know how blessed she is. Where this woman is seated, I'm bringing the whole world to come and meet her. Where she's seated, all the big, big stars, she could not have imagined five, ten years, they are coming here one after the other. Where she's stand sitting, they are coming to meet her there. Have your back. What am I? If you are clapping for Jesus, make it better. So today, I want to give you a few, a few nuggets that will help you for 2024. Because I have great expectations for you and from you in 2024. Therefore, as part of my assignment, I necessarily have to equip you. So that when the occasion comes, you will know how to respond. So today, I want to equip you. And these things will work in every area of life. These are things that the Holy Spirit dropped in me in the place of prayers. It will bless you. Father, grant all chance today. Lord, let unction be released. 
hearts are open and they are receptive. And lives will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, towards the end of the year, we kept pushing an agenda. And there was a method to that situation. And one of the things we were pushing very hard all through December was that we should make plans for 2024. Because he who fails to plan, plans to fail. You need to make plans. Even the book of Habakkuk says that you should write down the vision. Write down the vision. So make plans. When you make plans, you are giving something to God to use. It's good to make plans. Don't just get into a situation. And we have seen it severally. We've seen people, they plan for the wedding day, but they don't plan for the marriage. So wedding day comes, they have all the dance, all the music, the best food in town, and then they get home that night. They don't know what to do with themselves. They can't get along. Because they never sat down to talk. They never went through counseling. And all kinds of problems begin to manifest. Don't just go into a business without having plans, without having goals. So we push that agenda very forcefully that we should make plans. Wherever we find ourselves, make plans. So today, I want to take it from there. I want to say that don't only make plans, but step out and begin to execute. Begin to execute. Become a doer. Become a doer. Because a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And it is doers that are rewarded. It's not planners. You can have the best plan written down. Put in your library. But at the end of the day, it is those who venture out, those who are bold enough to take steps in actualizing those plans. So this year, I'm challenging you to execute. Perform. Act. Even God told the Israelites, after they've been circled around a particular mountain for a period of time, the Lord told them, he said, you have lingered too long in this spot. It's time to move forward. And I'm charging somebody, I'm charging a family here today that it's time to act. It's time to execute all those wonderful plans, all those strategies that you have put in place. Step out. Step out. You'll be shocked to find what can happen? What can come from those plans? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody say, I hear you. Somebody say, I hear you, pastor. So step out. Look at Ezra. Ezra chapter 10 and verse 4. I was careful to select this scripture. Ezra chapter 10 and verse number 4. He say, arise for this matter belong. Okay. Okay, give me New King James Version. And just so, for many of us who will come here to teach or to preach or to minister, the best translation that I'm advocating is New King James Version. Once in a while you can reference other, um, but 90-95%, make sure you reference New King James Version. You say, arise, for this matter is your responsibility. Not God's responsibility. This matter is your responsibility. It's within your control. This matter is not in the control of the environment anymore. This matter is not in the control of the government. It says, arise, for this matter is your responsibility. We also are with you. Be of good courage. And do what? No, and do what? No, power line. And do what? And do what? Be of good courage and do it. Step out. Execute. It's better to execute and fail and learn from that experience than to be an armchair critic from year to year waiting for all the, all the lights to turn green before you leave your home. Is that ever going to happen? 
No, is that ever going to happen? No, church, we are preaching together, we are teaching together. You, you are your, in your house and you are waiting for all the light to turn green before you get in your car and start driving to your place of work. Is that ever going to happen? No, no, no. Only 50 people responded. Is that ever going to happen? 120 people have responded. Is that ever going to happen? Maybe 300. Is that ever going to happen? Step out. Execute. Register that business. Do something about it. Do something about it. I move on from that. Number two. Do not only step out and execute. How you execute is very important. Therefore, you must intentionally choose to embrace the culture of excellence. Excellence. Now, in our culture, people think that excellence is very expensive. No, actually, mediocrity is more expensive than excellence. Because excellence, when you do things excellently, it may take more time, it may take more effort, but over time, it sustains. You don't have to come and redo it again and again and again. But when you do things, when you embrace mediocrity, then things will break down, then you have to do it again. Then things will break down, then you have to start from all afresh. So excellence is cheaper than mediocrity. What is excellence? Excellence is the attitude of standing out, outstanding performance, outstanding execution. It may take a little bit more time. It may take a little bit more effort. But it pays over time. I wish I had the time to read from Psalm 8. Read, let's start from verse 1. Psalm 8 and from verse 1. You see that God is an excellent God. Even the name of Jesus is an excellent name. God never did anything wishy-washy. Genesis chapter 1, he created this and he saw he was good. Genesis verse 2, verse 3, verse 4 to verse 30. Everything God created, he saw that they were good. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Now listen, you realize that when God created the heavens and the earth, the whole earth was not like Garden of Eden. I hope you know that. It was, Garden of Eden was only a small portion. And the intention of God was that we should take that excellence and replicate it, duplicate it, replicate it, duplicate it everywhere we go. So God is expecting excellence from you. And then, you know, from a cultural perspective, let me say this. We don't expect excellence. We do not. Because we, we, are, we don't want to commit to excellence. As a people, we don't want to commit to excellence. And this is why you see people come to church, not this church in Jesus' name. People just want to come to church, do anyhow, sit anywhere. And no, 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 they, there's a way things are done. And you hear um, 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 maybe some hotel, hotels. The last time I went to Africa, I don't know if that is still the case. Oh, they, 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 they ride as one of their selling points. Oh, we have power, 24 hour power. You are a hotel for crying out loud. Are you not supposed to have power? So, why does having power for 24 hours, why should it be a selling point? It, it's expected. It's expected. So, why sh should that be what you are using to sell your hotel to me? Okay. Excellent. Do you know that coming late violates the principle of excellence? It violates. Do you know what it is? When they say African time, you know that thing is a disgrace. 
So they invite you, they tell you that, oh, uh, the, the program, they said, uh, is 6 p.m., but they tell you to come at 8 p.m. It's an insult. That means you're not. I, she's here. We used to attend one church in Virginia. When we get to church, we'll be waiting for people to come. We'll sit down. The time for the service has started. Whenever those families show up, we'll start service. The church of Jesus Christ. Bought and washed by the blood of the precious lamb. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when you are late, when you are late to any occasion, I understand that there will be emergencies. But when you are late out of habit to any occasion, you are telling everybody around there that you are not disciplined, that they can't trust you, that you can't commit to come on time. Are you hear what I'm saying? So the next time you have an occasion, let your 10 o'clock be your 10 o'clock. Are you hear what I'm saying? Excellence. Give the best. And the result will come. <laughs> I, I, I hope you know that. Okay, let me give you the scripture. Proverbs 22 and 29. That's the scripture I will use for that. I have other scriptures, but let me just stick with that. Proverbs 22, 29. Do you see a man or a woman who excels in his work? Excellent. So when you are excellent, intentional about what you do, this is what happens. He said, he will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Listen to me. If you are a businessman, if you are a businesswoman, the quality of your, the quality of your client will determine how much you make and how far you go in that business. If you have a business now and Elon Musk is your only client, you open a law firm in your mosque. It's your only client. Do you need another client? No, do you need another client? No, it's only one client you need and you are fine. I know somebody, their law firm, all they had was this man, uh, this Bois cement guy, you know. So, um, that's the only client they had. And the law firm was doing very, very well. What I'm saying that when you excel, when you do things excellently, only quality men, kings, will come for your business. Not, not Walmart approach. Thank God for Walmart. God bless Walmart. But I'm telling you that you can have one client, two clients, ten clients. One, one business, one, in a year can set to you for 2024. You, you know that there are some people you take business to, you don't even ask how much will it be. When, you, when they finish what they have to do, they will send you the bill. It's not negotiable. You know there are people like that. Answer me now. It's not all this, uh, how much will you take? Oh, I will take uh, 10,000. Okay, bros, you're not going to take 7,000. Ah, uh -uh, which one is 7,000? Make it 7,005. No, this one, when they finish, they will send you your bill. And when you to see the quality of work, shame don't let you negotiate. Excellence is not negotiable. And you know, the thing about excellence is that it's, 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 it's neutral. Even people who don't like you, they will patronize you. Because they know, they, they know, hey, I remember one time, some years ago, I said they should go and get me food from somewhere to break fast, to break my fast. So they went to one place in town. When I ate that food, bros, for two, three days, I was going to the bathroom. So I vowed, never. Even if they cook this soup with lion meat, you know lion meat? I will never. Praise the Lord. They are still open. They are in town. Excellent. Commit to excellence. Do things right. And the customers will come. And the people will come. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. I say in the mighty name of Jesus. And don't forget that excellence is progressive. What was, what is mediocre today was excellent yesterday. So if excellence is not a destination that a choir, we have reached this destination, let's abide here, or whatever department, or whatever business. What was excellent yesterday is that mediocrity today. So you must keep advancing, you must keep progressing. Why? Because the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. I thought somebody would join me. I'm brighter. I say I'm brighter. I say I'm brighter unto the perfect day in the name of Jesus. Is that your testimony? I say is that your reality? Things will get better for you. And get better for you. I say and get better for you. In the name of Jesus. Say amen. amen. So point number one, execute. Go into action. Point number two, excellence. Now point number three, which I take from Genesis chapter 41, make sure as you go about this year that you exceed expectations. Exceed expectations. I know many of us, we work for institutions, we work for organizations, we clock in and we clock out. You know, when, when I was in Bible school, I used to work somewhere in Tulsa. Me and Pastor George, that's where we used to work. And you'll be amazed at some Africans. Africans are blessed people. Are, are you blessed? No, no, you're not. I say, are you blessed? Ten minutes to clock out time. They're already standing by the clocking machine. Ten minutes. So that immediately, and they're out. And they're the ones that will come later. Okay, let me say this again. You know, it's only me that can say some things to you. And some of you people will be clocking in for you. You are not there, they will clock in for you. Then 15 minutes to close time, you are waiting to clock out. You, are the, you, are the, you, come, you came late and you are the first to leave. Where's integrity? Exceed expectations. And we see it in the story of Joseph. Joseph, his gift only worked for him when it came to the interpretation of the dreams. Pharaoh sent for him. He interpreted the dreams that there's going to be seven years of abundance. Then there will come seven years of farming. And that those farming years will be like there was never abundance. Many of you are in your years of abundance now. You have your energy. You can do two jobs. You have your energy. You can do three jobs. <clears throat> you even have a side hustle. But ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, you will not always have that energy like that. You are bouncing all over the place like ball now. But the time will come. You will have to slow down. You have to calm down. You can do two jobs again. So these years of abundance, what are you doing with it? What are you doing with these years of energy? These years of life? That you can stand for 12 hours as a flood knows. You can stand for 8 hours. A time is coming. You can't even stand for 2 hours anymore. What becomes of you? How are you maximizing what you are making now? It will not always come like that. Listen. There's a season that God brings a man into. Then you will see the gushing. But it will not be like that forever. What do you do with it? So Joseph tells them that when the family finally, finally hits, it's like there were never, never abundance in the first place. 
They said, okay. So Joseph now went a step further after interpreting the dream. He now told the king, he said, look for a wise man. Look for a prudent man. This is not gift now. This was his own solution he was giving. A man who will oversee the seven years of abundance and store up a certain percent of what is coming in. Oh, Pharaoh, let's not eat with ten fingers. Let's save for the rainy days. Let's invest for the rainy days. And he proper solution. These solutions were not part of his giftings. They were things he knew in the place of study, in the place of experience, having served in the prison system, having served in Potiphar's house. And Pharaoh looked at him. Where can we find such a prudent man to oversee these affairs? Seeing that it's coming from you. I only called you to interpret dreams. You interpreted the dreams and now you are a proper solution. You become the second most powerful man in the land. Pharaoh removed his ring and gave to him. Pharaoh gave him the best chariot in town. No one lifted a finger in, in Egypt. He was second only to the Pharaoh. He became the most powerful man. He became the exec of Rabako. Up to today in Egypt, all the lands belong to Pharaoh. It was the solution that was proffered by Joseph. So he prospered, became a prime minister. He brought all his people. And they prospered too. Why? How? Because he exceeded expectations. They told him to do this. He did it and went beyond. Went beyond. Stop being, stop doing just enough. Stop doing just enough. Don't do that. Exceed expectations. This expectation we are talking about, it may just be after you are done, eh? You just clean up your workstation and arrange everything the way it's supposed to be. That may just be it. This doing exceeding expectation may just be getting a cup of coffee. Since your boss likes coffee, on your way back, find out the kind of coffee he likes. Get him a cup of coffee. This exceeding expectation may just be once in a while, you take your boss's car, you gas it up, or you go wash it, you run it through. That may just be it. I can't forget, Pastor Gadagba, I remember one time. They were going through certain stuff. So we were praying with him, praying together. I was with him then, Brother Joshua in Bible school. One day I went to his house. The wife was not home, just me and him. I swept the house. I washed the dishes. I took out the trash. He still, he still remembers. He still talks about it. And of course, you cannot speak anything negative about Pastor Gadaga in my presence. I will fight you. Because we have four Bible school graduates under him. And everybody was demanded. They want to get microphone. And everybody was like, okay. If he wants you to have microphone, he will give you. He doesn't want you to have it. So forget it. Just sit down, shut up. <laughs> Enjoy the administration. But he will complain, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Three of them. <laughs> till today, they still cannot. They are still. Do extra. Exceed expectation. This expectation, exceeding expectation, may just be you eh, coming with a positive attitude. You know, some people, once they enter the job site, the whole, the whole atmosphere is messed up because of their stinking attitude. Their face. They say, ah, uh, what happened to my face? This is how my face is. This is how my face This is not how your face is. Smile. Put smile on your face. Tell your neighbor, exceed expectation. Are we still together? That's number three. Number four. Number four. Are we doing well so far? Number four, 
And I take this from 1 Samuel chapter 17. And it's the story of David and Goliath. You all know that story very well. So what's the principle here? Embrace difficulty. Embrace challenges. No man becomes anything significant without solving major problems. It is the job of Satan to put obstacles in your way. That's his assignment. And there is no way you will flourish or prosper in any industry without coming across obstacles. Obstacles are not meant to limit you. Obstacles are not meant to stop you. When, look, that obstacles is something that will, that will discourage a lot of people. That obstacles is something that will prevent a lot of people from becoming champions. And so you see David. David was not even old enough to be in the army. So now he takes food to his brothers. And his brother, one of the brothers was asking him, what are you doing here now? Like the Cameroonians will say, you have come to do Congo, sir. Who, who, who told you? This is not a place for boys. This is a place for men. Soldiers, proven men, men of timber and caliber. Why are you here? David said, what is this? What have I done now again? As they were having that conversation, here comes a giant of a man. A humongous man. Bragging, challenging, give us a man. If the man can take me down, we'll become your slaves. But if I take the man down, you become our slaves. The Bible says that for 40 days, that brag has been going on. For 40 days, that challenge has been going on. And all of a sudden, David appears. And then he began to find out what will be given to any man who takes down this man. Number one, he said, your family will be excused from paying taxes and all these other things. And then number two, you marry the king's daughter. Now, you have to understand, David. Please, you guys, you try and all these children try to come there to stay one place. Please, please. You have to understand that David was not a regular child. He was a very lonely child. David was very lonely because he was the son of another woman. You remember when they called sons out so that the prophet can choose a king? He wasn't even good enough to be among those who were selected because his mom was not in the house. She was a, a child from another woman. And so he didn't enjoy many privileges. He, he was lonely. He was a lonely child. These other ones, they had the same father, the same mother, and they did things together. They talked together. They, they ostracized him. They saw him like a pariah, like a social pariah. Like, okay, your mom came to mess up things. What are you doing here? You shouldn't be talking. Say, so you need to shut up. So it was a, that's why he was always at the back of the desert. He was a very lonely child. So when he heard that you'll be married to the king's daughter, I think he had self-esteem issues. He would want to talk to a woman was a problem. When he heard that, he said, I will take down the head of this man. You know, I told you that he was a very lonely child. So for many, many years, at the back of the desert, he has been practicing with that sling. For years, it was at the back of the desert, he penned many of those psalms that we read in the place of loneliness. Nobody to talk to. Then he began to compose. He began to compose. That was how it came about many of those psalms that we now read. And so what did David do? Rudy boy, about 16, 17 years old, he took up the challenge. And when Goliath saw him, you would think that Goliath would come and say, you small boy, come here, I will finish you. But the first thing that Goliath did was that Goliath cursed him with his gods. Goliath did not say, I'm big enough to take down this guy. He knew that your strength can fail you anytime, but you need the backing of your gods. 
And David responded. And we know how the story ended. And instead of David going back, fearfully going back, the Bible says that David advanced forcefully against Goliath. Took down Goliath. Didn't even have a knife in his hand to chop off his head. Took Goliath's knife and a sword and cut off his head and held Goliath's head like this. That is how you hold the head of your enemies. That is how you hold the heads of those who are contending against your destinies. Those that says your children will not prosper. Those that are saying that your children will not amount to anything. That is how you hold your heads. You will behead them. You will take them down. You will see their end in the name of Jesus. Any adversary that comes against you. That comes against your destiny. Your future. That is how you hold your heads. In the name of Jesus. And then, when that happened, they began to sing. They began to sing. Saul has killed his thousands. And David has killed his ten thousands. And that was how jealousy entered. And the king Saul now began to run after the one who saved a whole nation from embarrassment. But I'm saying that it is not God that made David. It, it, don't get me wrong. It's not God that made David king. It's not God. It's not God. The one who made David king was Goliath. If David did not kill Goliath, he would not become king. They would not know him. It was that embarrassment, that national disgrace that he decided to do something about that pushed him into spotlight. I pray. That in your organization, there will be a problem that only you can solve. Ah, the guys here didn't understand it. I said there will be a problem that only you can solve. In this generation, things will come up and only you can handle it. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Don't run from problems. We run from difficulties. We always run from obstacles. The quality of your obstacles or the difficulty you do something about will determine how far you will go in life. Actually, the size of your enemies. That's why I can't wait for me personally. I can't wait for millionaires to be looking for my trouble. You know, you know I've been saying it for years. I'm tired for all these poor, poor people with their cheap, cheap phones going on Facebook that they are not even paying for and saying nonsense. I pray that very soon only millionaires will be looking for my trouble. Mm, you see, you are, not, you are not getting it. No, 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 these guys are not getting it. They are not getting it. You know, you know what? This, the, your, the quality of your enemy eh, determines whether you have arrived or not. You now. If you say, President Biden, President Biden, President Biden, President Biden. Does he know you? No, does he know you? You can stay in your bedroom all you want and say rubbish all you want. He does not know you. You don't exist. Hallelujah. But the time is coming when you cough in your bedroom. Ah, some we catch cold out there. Shah hallelujah. Shah hallelujah. Let me press it further. Let me press it further. So, embrace challenges. Don't run from challenges. Champions are made out of challenges. The problems you are willing to solve. Your diploma will not grant you, will not give you success. It's not a, it is the pro, in fact, they hire you to solve problems in that organization. They hire you to solve problems there. Hallelujah. So, number four, number five, number five. You're going to like this. And I take it from Philippians chapter three and verse number 13. If you are going to make it big, make significant progress this year, this is what you're going to do. You're going to stay focused. You know, focus. Listen to me. You have limited energy. You have limited time. You have, there are limited opportunities. You 
can't be everything to everybody. I hope you understand that. You can't be this and this and this and this and this and that. All at the same time, it's not possible. So choose one or two things and pour yourself in it. Choose one or two things. Can you imagine? Let me come with this example again. You get fried rice. Somebody say yes to fried rice. You get jollof rice. Somebody say yes to it. Then in Cameroon, you get ndole soup. Then uh, you, uh, Yoruba, you get okra soup. Ibos, you get ofe manu, ofe, I don't What's it called? Edika Ikon. Somebody say yes to Edika Ikon. Then my place, you get owo soup. Say yes to owo soup. Then you don't get eba, eh? And then you don't get pandediam. Then you don't get uh, akbu. Do you know what they call akbu? Ibos, they know that. Then you don't get amala. Then you don't get semovita. Hallelujah. Then you don't get mashed potatoes. Hallelujah. Then you don't, you don't join it together. Mash it, mash it, mash it, mash it together. And all those soup and everything, mash it, mash it, and you eat it. What will happen? No, no, what will happen? No, no, what will happen? No, no, I can't hear you. What will happen? You will get what? You will get what? You will get constipation. <clears throat> Don't be too quick to, <clears throat> to judge people. <clears throat> Thank you. Many of you now, you're already doing that. You have spiritual constipation. Many of you, you have spiritual constipation. You are not focused. No, you are focused, not you. I'm talking to the people on camera. I'm talking to all the monitoring spirits. Oh, we don't like our feed and everything, but they are monitoring. It's you now they talk to. Now you, I get time for you today. Say amen. amen. Now, when you listen to this preacher, then you listen to this preacher. Some of you will hide and go, and go so, to some conferences. I know. No problem. At the end of the day, it's spiritual constipation. Because if I line up 10 preachers here now, I give them one scripture. Eh? Just one scripture. John 3 16. Some will preach the, John 3 16. The next one will come and undo what the other one has preached. And then the next one, at the end of the day, you'll be confused. That's the truth of the matter. That's why I tell people. There's nothing cute about you listening to all these other preachers, all these preachers. Put your head in one place, one or two places. Put your head in one or two places. I remember Pastor John. Pastor John told me of one encounter when Bible school there, he was, he, was, um, he was one year ahead of me. And he told me that he was trying to listen to a man of God. And the Holy Spirit told him, don't listen to that man of God. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with him. Not everybody is sent to you. You don't understand. Not everybody's prayer can work for you. Okay, can I push it a little bit? Not everybody you give to can bring harvest to you. Number one, they may not be your prophets. They don't know you. Number two, they may not be givers. If you give seed to a non-giver, you throw that seed away. Let me, breaking news, most pastors do not give. Most pastors don't give. They want you to bring. They are the, they are the uh, what's the name of this sea? Red, the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea. We went to his bed. This man, I know she's very adventurous. She entered the water. Me, I said, I'm not entering. I didn't step the dead. I did not step. She went and said, ah, come on. I said, I'm not entering. Part of it, was, I was vexing that day, actually. <laughs> Let me balance it. I was vexing. Remember the day I told you guys that I wanted to go and do massage? That massage thing happened in the night. So this one happened during the day. She said, come and enter, come and enter. I said, I'm not, I'm not entering, I'm not entering. I'm not, I was vexing. <laughs> you know, you know the vex sometimes. <laughs> you know the vex? So don't lie so that you go to heaven. I said, I'm not entering, I'm not entering. I, vex. I was vexing. So then, and I went for massage. So I said, okay, let me massage myself so that I can feel good. So I saw one fine girl. Israeli girl. She was attending the process. I said, okay, please. My body will come down soon. 
So as I was approaching, <laughs> then it was my turn. I was happy. We talk everything, exchange everything. I said, at least this one, my style is stress. You know, stress is not a good thing. <laughs> Do you like stress? You know, who taught you depends. The time is what follows you. I hope you know that. Hallelujah. So I said, okay. I said, oh, I can't. Then, when it was my turn, one short, kure kure man, old, ugly man just came like this. So I said, okay. I said, he came to take something out. Go back. <laughs> so the guy just stood there, and the guy did me like this. I said, nobody behind me, you see. <laughs> I said, no, this is the one I want. He <laughs> said, come here. So now the point is, many pastors are dead sea. If you are giving to a pastor who is not a non-giver, do you know that many pastors don't tithe? By the message of the Lord, I once sat in a place at the first minister's conference. That was the first question I asked in the whole denomination. Who do we tithe to? And they said, nobody. I said, eh? I was a rookie pastor. I was only about three. It was in February. And I was commissioned as a pastor in November. So I'm three months old as a rookie pastor. And I'm asking the biggest man in the organization, all of them, they were all like, Adiago was there. Adiago still refers to it. I said, as a ministry, who do we tithe to? They said, nobody. I said, eh, eh. That's the reason. Every time we gather, it's money, it's money, it's money. It's not enough. It can never be enough. I hear what I'm saying. Most pastors don't give up. If you are giving to a pastor, it's not giving. You throw your money away. Instead, demons will come and beat you at night. Somebody say, God forbid. But there are some people. They have what they call Ozigbo, Ozigbo anointing. Do you know Ozigbo, Ozigbo? Is there any Igbo here? You are able. What's Ozigbo, Ozigbo? Sharp, sharp. You have not released the seed. Harvest has come. I say you have not released the seed. Harvest has come. Because they are crazy givers. They give without looking back. Somebody shout hallelujah. Focus. I say focus, right? Let me tell you this. One of the things focus will do in your life is that focus makes you blind. When you're highly focused on what you're doing, it makes you blind. You don't even know what's going on here, what's going on here. So when I say things like, sometimes a whole year, I don't enter Walmart, people think something is wrong with me. When I say things like, sometimes I don't receive 90% of the calls that I get, people think something is wrong with me. The thing about focus is that, it makes you blind. Zero. Lesser focus on the assignment that God has committed in your hands. The quickest way I get into people's trouble is when they leave the church. Maybe they move to other places. And now they are trying to access me. They can't access me. I've not finished blessing people under me. Why should I have time for somebody who is outside? Somebody say Focus. Focus on what you are doing. There are too many distractions. You think you need the approval of all your family members. Listen to me. The last people you get approval from are your family members. Everybody will believe in you. Your family members will be the last to believe in you. Ask Jesus. You see that Jude you are hearing? You see that book of James? They were the siblings of Jesus. They did not believe in him. It was when he died that did not believe in him. By the way, when he was on the cross of Calvary, where was James? Where was Jude? By the way, that Jude, his name was Judas before. So when Judas screwed up, that was a, mm, not me, I rejected it in Jesus' name. He changed the name to Jude. Where were they at the cross of Calvary? How come they are alive, they are not dead, and Jesus turns his mother over to John, and he has siblings, they were alive. 
and he turns his mother Mary to John. Where were his siblings? They did not believe in him. They thought something was wrong with his head. Which leads me to the next point. You want to hear it? Are you sure you want to hear it? See, sorry, I'm not walking as fast as before. Just bear with me. After today, I'll have my freedom again. Because somebody had to come address me like this this morning. So they told me that I have to be careful. Now, listen to me. You want to hear this? Don't misinterpret it. Just accept it. Only the paranoid survives. You must be paranoid about what you're doing. Do you, people think that, that being paranoid is a negative word. It is in many senses. But it can also be very positive. You must be, you must be swallowed, paranoid with what you are doing for your best to come out. Your best to come out in the name of Jesus. So many years ago, two, two pastors Many of you know them in Nigeria. They were fighting, quarreling, all those things. So they went to Bishop Oyudeko. They said, can you enter this matter and broker peace between these two people? They say, he said, who are they? They called their names. He didn't know them. And they are television evangelists. As we speak now, one is all over the world and the other one has gone down. Because he doesn't watch TV. He doesn't read newspapers. He doesn't allow for gossip. So he said, who are they? He said, who are they? And he didn't know them. Why? Because he's focused on his assignment. Focus makes you blind. One of the biggest lawyers that came from Africa is Afe Babalola. Now he's like 91. 91 or 92. Every, he, he, yeah. he, he left Ibadan. He used to practice in Ibadan. Or just state Nigeria. When he retired, he now went back to his, where he was born or whatever. I was still watching an interview he did like two weeks ago. And he still says, he, I think he works for 12 hours a day. This man is a multi-billionaire. But it's the culture he has developed for this year. You, you have not worked for eight hours. You will have time to watch soccer. All the baby shower, you will attend. Man, you will attend baby shower party. Man, a whole man will be a baby shower. You can. Okay, let's leave it. Number six, and this we have stopped today. And they will do the Thanksgiving. Now, if you do all these things and the God factor is not there, you have wasted time. This is what we see. The ungodly, they will gather and gather and gather. And at the end of the day, Satan will hold them in one way. They have money. Some cannot sleep. You know, even in your condition, you know you eat everything, you. You eat everything. Anything they bring, you swallow. You know that there are some rich people, there are many things they can't even eat. You say, oh my God, I can't eat pepper. Oh my God, I can't eat oil. Oh my God, oh my God, I'm allergic to this. I'm all... Bros, what are you allergic to? No, answer me now. What are you allergic to? Okay, where you, where you are coming from? You didn't even know the meaning of being allergic to something. See, I'm allergic to this. No, no, no. Those are the sickness of big men. Sickness of rich men and rich women. No. When you grow up, everything they bring you swallow. Did I tell you that when I was in college, one day I opened my pot of soup, I saw cockroach inside. I removed the cockroach. Put my soup on the fire. Warm it. Ate it. The next day, when my roommate saw that nothing happened to me, they were still asking to take out of it. And they were there when I removed the cockroach out of the soup. It is when I came to America now, I'll eat something, my belly will do something. It was never like that, oh. I swallow everything. My stomach was a biological pulse. Anything you give me, 
my stomach will recook it and digest it. You can eat anything. So we used to have some songs when we were in elementary school. Some have food but cannot eat. Some can eat but have no food. We have food and we can eat. Glory be to God. Bless this food, O oh Lord, for Christ's sake. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. So some have food they can't eat. But you, hey, yeah. God has blessed you. So I'm saying that those rich people who do it in an ungodly way, Satan will hold them for work in one way. So it may be in their children. They have, a, there's a president I know now, rich, he's a billionaire, but if you see some of his children, oh my God, I can't be saying some, some things. So is this truly success at the end of the road? Now you can't do anything about them. Look at these children. Some become rich. <clears throat> they can't keep marriages. Then they marry the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Elon Musk is lonely. Do you know he's lonely? Elon Musk is lonely. Convenor practices. The God factor. Number one, you're a businessman, you're a businesswoman. Get God involved in your business. Get God involved in your business. How do you do this? As you tight for yourself, tight for your organization. This church now, if I, I didn't, I only sent the rents of this church, was it uh, Friday or so? Because I needed, number one, to pay the tight of the church first, then pay first fruit. <laughs> Not only of the church, pay my own first fruit because my mouth cannot become open until I have paid my first fruit. So, tight for the church. <laughs> In fact, one day, the organization, they sent me a statement and the church was like, was it six weeks or less than eight weeks? When I saw how much has gone out from here, as a I'm the one that signed the check. I know what will profit you. I know what will bless you. Are you hear what I'm saying? The things I couldn't do where I was coming from because I didn't have that liberty. Now I have it. A child coming from out of state yesterday, and one of the principal officers was talking to me. So I asked her, I said, ask your pastor. Don't ask your pastor in front of others. Go and meet him. Say, pastor, who are we tied into? Because when he said all the problem, I knew what the problem was. There's no magic to this thing. Somebody say covenant practice. Don't joke with your tight. Your tight protects, it secures that which you have. Don't joke with your first fruit. People say, but first fruit, first fruit. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Church, can I ask you a question? Do you know, and God will give me the time to do that, maybe, I don't know, sometime down the line. Do you know that your first son, if you are a believer, you know that your first son belongs to the Lord? Answer me now. God actually demands for your first son. He demands for your first son. Even the first sons of animals, you know that God demands for it, that it belongs to him. That he, the first song of every animal you have belongs to him. You, do you know that God only had one son? He didn't have two. Somebody say one. And that only son that he had, what did he do with it? He gave it. First fruit. You want to hear? I'm talking about covenant practices. Oh, take your widow. Give to widow. Oh, give to orphans. Give to the helpless. Helpless who are willing to help themselves. Not helpless that are, that the spirit of Esau is upon them. You know, when Israel when Israel left Egypt, they spent 40 years 
in the wilderness, right? So, when they left the wilderness, where was the first place they got to? Where was the first city they got to? Jericho. Jericho, right? So, what happened? They were to march around it for six days. Don't say a word. So that you don't use your mouth to spoil the harvest. Then on the seventh day, what were they asked to do? I said, what were they asked to do? No, I didn't hear you. What were they asked to do? So when they shouted, what happened? Actually, the wall did not fall down. The wall entered the ground. That's what happened. The wall entered the ground. So... What was the one instruction that God gave them concerning Jericho? No, I can't hear you. Can somebody help me here? What was the only instruction that God gave to the children of Israel concerning Jericho? Ah, so now you, you don't want to talk now, right? You don't want to talk. Not to take anything from Jericho. And Jericho was a commercial city. Very rich, very prosperous. And God said, nothing. They should not take anything, anything from it. But one person flouted the order. What's the person's name? Church, wait, church. You guys don't read your Bible? Who was the person that flouted that instruction? Achan. What did Achan do? Talk to me now. He's told. He's told. He because God said he shouldn't take anything. But Achan took. He took beautiful clothes, beautiful robes. Took things and everything and hid it. Joshua didn't know. Nobody knew. He did. And then the next battle they were going for is I. Is it I? And they were a small place. Even Joshua said, no, no, no. We don't need too many soldiers. Let's just send a few boys to go and discipline them. And when they went, Israel was, was, was defeated. Ah! Joshua said, no, this cannot be. It's not possible. What happened? And he went before the Lord and found out that Achan, somebody stole. So they came to the tribe. They took the tribe. Then after that, they came to a family. Achan's family was taken. And he came down to Achan. I said, Achan, what happened? And he said, oh, I took, oh my God. And they brought Achan out, brought his family members out, brought all the things that he stole. What did they do to them? They stoned them to death. I want to ask you, why was that, why is that relevant? Because Jericho was God's first fruit, was the first fruit of Israel after they left they step into promised land. Jericho was their best, first, best effort. Was their first profiting. Was the first thing they gained when they entered the promised land. And God said, don't touch anything. Everything over to me. So Jericho was Israel's first fruit. And somebody messed them up. And when that situation was judged accordingly, guess what happened? Victory came again. Victory came again. Listen to me. There are covenant practices. Like this thing I'm telling you now, this first fruit, it's not compulsory. It's not compulsory. But tithe is compulsory. But from experience, from experience, people who do it, they never stop doing it. I pastor many of them. They never do it. They never stop doing it. Covenant practices. Take care of the poor. And you belong to a church. And some of you, maybe you did it. I mean, one year things happened and you, you decided to do it. <laughs> you two, you, you can compare and contrast. Take care of the poor. We take care of the poor in this church. We go out to the streets. All kinds of things. We look within. Sometimes, have you read about Mekisedek in the, in the Bible? Sometimes, maybe services, when all the offering comes in, somebody has a need. I turn everything for the person. That person is the Mekisedek for the day. And you won't hear it anywhere. Few. You, have, you have a problem, except I don't hear about it. If I hear about it and I'm in the position, I will do something. Even if not all, I'll do something. 
covenant practice. Covenant practice. Be a, 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 a um, an addicted titer. An addict prophet offering. Your profiting is linked to your profit offering. Don't just tell your pastor, God bless you. God will bless you whether you say it or not. The way you tell your pastor that you stand with him, you don't only sow spiritual seed in his in prayer. Some are willing to pray and fast for seven days for you. I don't want you. I can pray by myself. You, you, I, I can pray by myself. Put your hand in your pocket. Bring weights in your pastor. See if the prayer will not be different. Do you understand? Prophet, make it. Your father is alive. Will you not be feeding your father? If you see the pastor as your spiritual father. Now, the pastor is not begging. He's not begging. God has blessed his wife and everything. But I'm saying that for your profiting, when you give to God, you are established. But when you give to your prophet, the one who's laboring over you, your profiting shall appear for all to see. Seven people said, Amen. Yeah. Covenant practices. Then, part of covenant practices is what you do in your home. I know women will like this that a man who cannot fend for members of his own household is worse than an infidel. Does it make sense? If you have, if God is blessing you, let it show in your family. Let it show in your family. People should be able to look at, at your family and say, Ah, Kai, if God do more for this person, uh, in fact, they will see it. Because that's your first constituency. Your brother and your sisters and your uncles, they are not your first constituency. Your immediate family. They are your first constituency. So God is interested in how you are handling them, how you are seeing them. Does it make sense? Covenant practice. As you do so, it's going to be a glorious year. I say, as you imbibe this thing, it's going to be a most wonderful year. To be a yes for you. A year of yes for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you are blessed today, put those hands together for Jesus and rise up. I say, put those hands together for Jesus and rise up. Is that all you can clap? Power line, is that all you can clap? Clapping is an acceptable form of worship. I can't hear you clap. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lift up those hands to the heavens and appreciate God for what you have heard here today. Just appreciate him. Thank him. I say thank him. Thank him. Don't murmur. Thank him. Father, we thank you. Indeed, you have been faithful. Thank you for this insight you have brought our way today. As we embark on this journey, we agree and we settle it in our hearts that it shall be a most glorious year for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amplify our efforts, breathe upon our efforts, amplify our results. In the name of Jesus. Say a believing amen. 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 Alright, we today's Thanksgiving Day, and by the mercies of the Lord, it's the first Sunday of the month, so we are required to come dancing, bearing our gifts, our sacrifices, and our offerings. And also, we have a family very beautiful family, new members of the church. Uh, today's their wedding anniversary too. I thought somebody would clap. If you are happy for them, you will clap your hands for Jesus. Make that clap bigger and better. Make it bigger and better. All right. I see you are really into this thing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. She's ready. That's my special girl right there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we are going to sing and we are going to dance 10 minutes, 15 minutes and a lot of things is going to happen here. Uh, the family that are celebrating their wedding anniversary, she doesn't want to be single that she wants to do it collectively but at the right time I may call their name. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. <clears throat> I'm going to call for the heads of departments, the heads of department to come up to the platform, the heads of department, all the heads of department, please come up to the altar. 
we have a few minutes to do this. Why are, why are you go like this? I want to be hearing. Where are the heads of the party? Please come up. Come up, come up, come up. Come up, come up, come up, come up. Come up. You know you came to dance, right? You know you came to dance, right? All right. Come on, 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 come on. Come, come, come close, come, 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 come. Where's my brother? Why are you there? Come on. Yeah. You forgot your department. Special duty. Come, 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 come. Her, her department is special. It's, it's special. De- hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I thought of what department will give her. So I said, okay, special duties department. Now hold on. So special duties. I know we have not talked. I've not been home since on 30th or so. I've not been home. So, do you think somebody who organizes baby shower, baby shower is a special duty? First person to go to the hospitals to visit mothers when they give birth to children. Is it special duties? The person that managed Joshua Agasedo at home. Is it special duties? So that's why I gave her that assignment. Shout hallelujah. Please come close. Please come close now. Don't be come close. Come close. Camera, I need you to get busy. We are the photographers. I need you to get busy. Hallelujah. Come, 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 come. Amen. My, this is purple. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is beautiful. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. So uh, the rest of you, okay, let's sing first, then you can come forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you leading? Who is leading it? Hallelujah. All right, let's go. Hallelujah. The Lord is our helper. Jehovah is our helper. Ebenezer is our helper. If you are ready and you know the Lord is your helper, why do you hear your scream? Hey, 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 let's scream. Let's scream. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ebenezer. My stone of help, only you are my help. Ah, it doesn't look like you're ready. Come on, exercise yourself, stretch out your arms. Come on. You are my stone of help, only you are my help. Even is I.
like Jesus is here and he's here. If you have the revelation that we are two or more are gathered is there, you will not be dancing like a monument. There's something about dancing before the Lord. Becoming like a baby, reckless before the Lord. Not cool and unorganized. And if you are at the back there, it shows that maybe something else is going on. Please, everybody, please come to the front. Come to the front. Black people don't be afraid of front. Black people are always afraid of the front. They like to stay at the back all the time. No, be comfortable with the front. Anywhere you go to, be very comfortable. The people at the back, come, come, come. I'm waiting for you, come. Come, come close, come close, come close, come close. One time, the last time I went to Korea, we, there's this last session for impartation. And when I entered, there were some seats in the front. And I want doctor, one doctor from this city, one Ghanaian guy, I forgot his name. He was a, he's a pastor too. I know that scripture that says, when you get to anywhere, leave the front seat so that they won't be disgraced. Me, I'm ready to be disgraced. I, I entered everywhere, you know, they sit on the floor, they sit on the floor. I enter, my eye red. I went straight to the front. If I the way I moved, you would think I'm, I'm the chief speaker. Do you know that nobody disturbed me? I sat there till the end. So don't be comfortable at the back. Always aspire to come to the front. Because you are a leader. You are the head and not the tail. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So now that you are here, like your life depends on it. Yes, sir. Because you're about to set the tone. Yes, sir. For 2024, you're about to set the momentum. Give it all you have. Dance like a child before you. Hallelujah. Jesus, you've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Everybody say. You've done so much for me, Jesus. I cannot tell it all. Everybody say. Listen, he says, if I have a billion tongues, it still won't be enough. Everybody say. One more time, listen. He says, he says, if 
fire of one billion tons. Is there one billion now? Everybody say. Say, 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 with my dancing, ever, ever, 
tell you this. I'm in front of the camera. We don't just come here to blow hot air. No. There are things, many things we do behind this scene that we will never say out. Everything we are supposed to do for your lifting, for your peace, for your prosperity. We are doing it. Everything. Because your victory is personal to me. It's personal. Your success, your well-being, your peace is personal to me. I'm not the kind of pastor that uh, just show up. I don't want him to just show up. I want God to be doing things in your life. Yeah. Working wonders in your life. Yeah. I, I, am I talking to somebody? Yeah. So, but one thing I will ask for you for this year is your consistency. Because beginning of year like this, people serve God. Then as the year begins to go down, you know, be faithful. Be faithful to God. Keep coming. Be faithful to God. Just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Some days you will not feel like it. If the truth is to be told, there are days I don't want to preach to. There are days I don't want to teach. There are days I just want to remove my shoes, lay on my couch. But I have to command myself. I have moments. I have slippery moments. I have blind spots. But I command myself. So try this year. Force yourself. If your body is slacking off, say, body, I'm in charge of you. We are going to church. Do you understand what I'm saying? You will see. My God will surprise you. Are you hear what I'm saying? My God will surprise you. And then by the grace of God today, uh, this is my beautiful sister and this amazing, sharp, millionaire husband. Can you raise your hands to the heaven? Today is your wedding anniversary. Oh, come on, power line, rejoice. Somebody shout hallelujah. This marriage, great and mighty things shall come out of it. The hand of the Lord is upon this marriage. And we use this as a point of contact for those that are still believing for something like this. That suddenly, the Lord shall come through for you. May the Lord decorate you with his peace. May the Lord grant you new dancing shoes. And for marriages that are under the sound of my voice, or who will listen to this broadcast down the age, we pray in the name that is above every name, that the Lord continuously will do new things in that lotus marriages in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. So thank you for coming. God bless you. The fast continues tomorrow. We are going to break the fast down by 1 or 2 o'clock. But um, Mondays through Saturdays, 6 o'clock, we are here. We are here. And we will have our first guest minister uh, from tomorrow. If you have the flyer. Do you have the flyer? The, the, the head of the department came to rejoice. For God's assignment. <laughs> They are really trying because back and forth, every flyer I have to look through up to 1 a.m., 2 a.m. They mean she, they are, they are, I mean, they are working hard. They are working very hard. So the first guest minister comes in tomorrow, and that is Pastor Blaze Ding Tong, all the way from Tulsa. I thought you would celebrate Jesus. Um, he's the pastor of Living Word in Tulsa. I think they have branches all over the place. A uh, young man full of life, full of energy, you are going to be blessed by that ministration. So he'll be here Monday through Friday, and then uh, I think Saturday and Sunday we will receive. Uh, you know, I went to I went to adopt an American father. I'm serious. I went to because now all of you have me as father, father. I now don't have father, so I went and adopted an American father. Is about 81 or 82. So, my God, the kind of things I've not heard since I was small. He's telling me now, Oh my, you are so cute. That is my intelligent son. Hey, he said, You are the best. None of you have told me that before. So, by the way, he's a white man. The white man is my father. So, how the white man bring back to a black man? Go and ask Jesus.
I, I went to him. I said, I'm adopting you. He said, me too. Before you came, I'm adopted you. So you will see him. Yeah, all I be, you know, we went to Texas to meet him. So we'll be here Saturday and Sunday just to bless us. Because I'm tired of only black people preaching in this church. <laughs> or oh, you both will come and preach. Hispanics will come and preach. Japanese, Asians will come and preach. He's an international church. The French will come and preach. Shout hallelujah. So you will see him. I have the picture, but I'm not giving to them. You see him. Saturday, Sunday, bless us as in Paris 81, going 82. And he travels all over the place. When he lives here, two weeks after, he's going to is it Brazil or uh, India. He's going to India for like six weeks. He's going to be in India for six weeks. So the Lord is good. So thank you for coming. Father, we are grateful for all that you have done for us here today. You have brought us here by your power. For the first Sunday celebration service, we pray for strength and for grace for all other Sundays. Come on, say a better amen. amen. For all other Sundays throughout this year, all the midweek services throughout this year, we ask for your strength, we ask for your grace, we ask for your mercy in the name of Jesus. I pray and I prophesy over somebody here that because you have danced and rejoiced here, when you get home, that problem will have been taken care of. That situation will have been taken care of. The hands you could not lift before you begin to lift those hands. Those evil growth has disappeared. That stomach condition is gone forever. That blood pressure is being normalized now. In the name of Jesus, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, everything is working the way it's supposed to work. Divine order is being enforced in your body. Divine order is being enforced in your systems. Divine order is being enforced in your organs. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bless you from the bottom of my heart. I bless your families. I bless the works of your hands. I bless your businesses. Can I get a better amen? amen? And so shall it be in the name of the Father, amen. and of the Son, amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Somebody shall glory. glory. Thank you, precious Father. I will be here tomorrow. God bless. Let's share the grace together. The grace. I can hear you. Yes. Yes. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Seven glorious hallelujah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hallelujah. You have first time commands, please see. Dr. Kofi and Sister Tonda, they have some packages for you, first time comers. That's Sister Tonda, that's Brad Kofi. They have some packages for you, first time comers. God bless you. God bless you. Please.